The last time I created an SMG tutorial, the game was patched, dramatically changing how SMGs work, so I had to scrap the whole thing. All that work, down the tubes, and not the YouTubes. Coincidentally, the same thing just happened on my video with Overwatch hitboxes. I have the absolute worst timing of all time. Just today, I decided to make the Pokemon Go video during the four hours it wasn't raining this weekend. Pokemon Go servers went down immediately, and I had to go home. This is me now. Greetings, hi, the War Owl greets you. Get ready to spray and pray and run and gun. Valve recently patched the submachine guns, changing their sound effects in line with the recent sound improvements to the heavy weapons. As someone who shoots firearms IRLs, I love the new sound. It sounds so much cooler and more realistic. For the purpose of this tutorial, let's pretend the P90 is a rifle, because most of what I say generally about SMGs just doesn't apply to the spray and pray king of the noobs. Faithful P90, you shall henceforth be known as Noobs Bane. The positives of submachine guns are their low cost, their high fire rate, their high movement speed, their low in accuracy caused by movement and jumping, and double the kill reward. The negatives are their low damage output and their low accuracy. This gives them a very specific role in competitive Counter-Strike, that of the anti-eco. When the enemy team is saving and can't afford primaries or even armor, purchasing a few submachine guns on a team can be a very safe play. Their low risk, moderate reward. If you get killed by saving players and they steal your SMG, it isn't really a big win for them, because they're not going to be able to use it on a buy round. Also, if you manage to get a kill with it, you get $600 as a reward, with the cheapest submachine gun costing only $1,050. You can see why this is such a great investment. The negative economically is that you're going to be throwing it away when you finally reach the gun round. Literally, I guess. The idea is that usually one to two of your players are going to die on an anti-eco, so the surviving players, if they have SMGs, can just trade with the corpses to get the proper primary, leading to no waste. In Counter-Strike, every weapon has its own personality. Each submachine gun has its quirks and can be used differently. The MAC-10 is the cheapest submachine gun at 1050 It's the terrorist-only equivalent to the counter-terrorists, MP9, valued at 1,250. Because of the low accuracy, especially for tap shooting, and the low inaccuracy caused by movement, both of these weapons are run and gun. I'm so good at video games, yeah, face up, baby! The Mac 10s spray pattern has a strange immediate jump to the right, but then goes upward and to the left in a relatively straight line. Most players will ignore the slight anomaly. The MP9, on the other hand, goes almost completely straight up and then jumps to the left rather violently. Once both reach the top elevation of the spray, they will oscillate side to side, creating a T pattern. Since you're going to be primarily spraying with these weapons, you'll want to learn good spray control and practice spray transfer. On anti-eco rounds, it's common to face a large number of opponents at the same time. So after killing one, you'll have to quickly transfer your spray to the next player. Headshots are your goal, since both weapons have abysmal damage output. Your other goal is to close the distance between you and your opponents. These weapons work best at closer distances. You can achieve this through smart positioning and game sense, or by running straight at your opponent while holding down the left mouse button. Oh boy, I'm sure you're gonna make the face clan now. Gambling. Oh. Check out the pattern when running at your target then when running at your target and controlling for recoil. I think you'll be surprised to see how potentially effective blatantly running straight at your opponents can be with these cheap submachine guns. Nevertheless, it seems the ideal method for using them is to strafe back and forth and spray, controlling for recoil like you're using a fire extinguisher. Next, we have the UMP and the MP7, both purchasable by either team. Compared to the MAC-10 and the MP9, these weapons are far more accurate and have much better recoil patterns. They're more versatile weapons, able to be used not just at close range. The UMP recoil pattern is kind of like a half circle. It goes up to the right and then goes back to the left, where the MP7 just goes up to the right before reaching the max elevation. These weapons are used a bit more like a rifle than the MAC-10 and the MP9, but they still do have good movement. It's just, they're actually capable of landing some accurate shots. The UMP does more damage than the MP7, but the MP7 has a higher rate of fire, so an argument could be made that the MP7 kills faster. The MP7 is more accurate, has better tap potential, but has a slightly lower movement speed. The big difference, though, and the deciding factor in purchase, like anything in life, 
is the price. The UMP cost 500 less than the MP7, and when you're purchasing them solely for economic reasons, competitive players tend to prefer the UMP. That's a decision you'll have to make for the situation. A lot of this does come down to personal preference. There are professionals who prefer the MP7 because of the high fire rate, which they find useful for spraying at close distances. So it kind of accomplishes what the MP9 and the MAC-10 do, as well as the UMP. However, the UMP is probably your go-to all-around SMG. Next is the Bison. We don't talk about the Bison. And we got the worst possible crappy, stupid-looking skin. Looks like a Nerf gun. We'll do a trade-up, I guess. Oh, no! No! <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've had to open a few extra cases. And if this one's a bison, I don't even know, man. I don't even know if I could handle it. <laughs> I... The bison sucks. It does crap damage. It has terrible armor penetration. For example, a shot to the chest with armor does 11 base damage. 11. 11. 11. 11. It's also more expensive than the UMP, so please, just purchase a UMP for crying out loud. In fact, the Bison kind of serves the same role as the MAC-10 or the MP9. This is like a more expensive version of those. I guess I can be biased. Uh, some people like the Bison, so here's a strength. It's got a massive magazine, but kids, size doesn't matter when you're shooting blanks. So it could potentially be good to stop a full-on eco rush. Also, if the enemy team takes it, it's basically a Trojan horse because of how abysmal it is against armor. The only situation I can see the Bison making sense is this. I'm a counter-terrorist and I just won the pistol round and then the second round, the terrorist purchased Armor Tech 9 and failed to plan the bomb and lost the round. So it's third round. I know the terrorists can't purchase armor. They might rush a site. Now is your moment, Bison. Now is your very brief window into usefulness. Like the Invisible Boy from the 1999 movie Mystery Men. I'm really reaching with my references today. There's one technique that works in submachine guns that I think is very important to learn, and that's how to push corners with it. Because of the low inaccuracy caused by movement and jumping, it actually makes sense to jump around corners with the weapon while shooting and going for headshots. And this is a technique that you will often see professional players utilizing. I think the best way to explain its usefulness is to show you what it looks like from the receiving end. The outlet has been training for this moment for three days straight now, only taking breaks to head down to the local pokey stop and pop down lures to look like a creepy pedophile for 30 minutes. Because you're facing pistol players or other SMGers, making your head a very difficult target to hit is a major advantage. So practicing your movement techniques is a major benefit to using the SMG. These are high movement weapons. But wait, Warow, there's one more submachine gun you intentionally avoided talking about. The one that violently dashes the hopes of many noobs against the wall when they play matchmaking. Who's that murder weapon? Find out some other time. Because as I said, the P90 really, it, it's its own beast. I'm the War Owl and I still have no closer.